So the idea I'd like to explore with you is putting the customer experience at the heart of a business. Will did a great job earlier of positioning this for us, but customer experience is shaped and defined at every touch point between a business and their customer. So it's really, really important for a business to understand how their customer service is measuring up to their customers' expectations and to develop a strategy to make sure they can exceed expectations every opportunity. Uh, we're all customers and uh, consumers, and I'd be really surprised if I did a survey and asked all of you if you'd experienced poor customer service. I know I have. I've had a very poor experience recently with Sky, a company that professed to give excellent customer service. They tell me that I'm very important to them. They tell me I'm a VIP customer in all of the communication that they send to me. They also tell me they'll monitor my calls and the recordings and make their changes to their, the, the way that they support their customers based on, on, on the, the, the way that their, their, their um, uh, agents are, are, are looking after their customers. Unfortunately, recently, that hasn't measured up to my expectation and the experience that I've been having with them. There are hundreds and hundreds of surveys out there as well that uh, demonstrate uh, customers' preferences in the way that they want to communicate with the businesses that they transact business with, businesses with. And although multimedia does have its place, and, it, and I'm, I'm sure there are lots of ways that customers want to be able to maybe chat or using um, uh, social media, for example, in this day and age, uh, there's an awful lot of uh, survey results out there that demonstrate the fact that customers prefer and like to speak to uh, a, a live person. You couldn't speak to one that isn't live, obviously. Uh, but um, I, I think a lot of this also comes down to the kind of transaction that's taking place at that point. And it's often the times that things are very complex or maybe more lucrative, the more expensive transactions that we make where we want to actually speak to somebody, not just do it online. Some of the research that I found was that 40% of customers want to speak to a person over the telephone when they're dealing with a company. 77% of respondents to a survey by New Voice Media believe that a phone call was the most effective way to get an answer quickly, and 25% of callers give up after they've been kept on hold for too long, all of which would make a, a really poor customer experience. If we look at this in a couple of different ways, so first of all, where we're trying to acquire new customers, Will mentioned this earlier and the importance of this and the fact that actually the customer experience that you're, you're giving your customers will define how they're going to recommend you going forward. Uh, but the, customer, the experience a customer has during their buying phase will play a big part in their decision of who to buy from. And if they experience poor customer service, it doesn't matter what your cost is and how you stack up to the competition on price, they're unlikely to buy from you if they've experienced poor customer service throughout that transaction. In fact, 61% of people who search on a mobile believe it's important that they can call a business when they're in the purchase phase of their buying cycle. So being able to go from that research phase into the, I now want to buy, hitting the phone to actually call and speak to somebody. And one of the areas here that we've used uh, over the years is the ability to be able to track and understand those unreturned missed calls. Businesses in the UK lose £30 billion of lost revenue every year due to missed calls. And analytics can play a really big part in uh, helping us uh, make sure that customers can get back to those customers, exceed their expectations of customer service. We can also use analytics when it comes to marketing campaigns. So if we're starting to do a promotion, maybe we're advertising, maybe there's, there's other ways in which we're trying to uh, attract new customers. If we use a unique DDI, we can track how many people responded to the advertising that we, we put out there, the, uh, whether it might have been a campaign that we were running, and understand the return on investment of however it cost us uh, to do that campaign in the first place. The other side of this is customer retention. And understanding the customer experience is equally, if not more important, in retaining customers. Everyone will profess to give excellent customer service at the point of attracting a new customer, but delivering on that promise is another thing entirely. 64% of people say customer experience is more important to them than price. So there's a massive danger if the promise isn't met. And 66% of customers will switch companies because of poor customer service. So again, retaining those customers is massively important. So there's been a lot of talk since the pandemic about new normal and hybrid working, but really none of this is new. We've been selling the technology for many, many years and 
actually the last time I was office based was 1996. Um, we had a th thought about 1996 when we were uh, rehearsing this yesterday and a few things came to mind. First of all, in 1996, it was the year that uh, the Nintendo 64 was launched. Uh, the Spice Girls were number one with Wannabe. Charles and Diana got divorced and Alex, our marketing manager, was two. <laughs> and the job that uh, I was uh, taking at that time was uh, my first job working with Ericsson LG, well, with LG at the time, selling the GSX and GDK. So products that didn't support the technology, but the company I worked for embraced the fact that I couldn't do that job working uh, from an office. I had to do that remotely and they trusted me to do that. So what's really changed at the moment is the need for the company to allow people to work from home. In the past, it's been very, very difficult for owners and managers to trust their staff to work from home. They liked to see the sea of people out on their shop floor. They could hear the phones ringing. They could see how quickly people were answering those phones. And in their mind, they were giving good customer service because they had an idea that that was what they were delivering. But now all of their staff have been working from their remote little offices individually, and they can't hear those phones ringing. They can't see what's happening. So analytics is the thing that's going to allow us to get those managers and directors to trust that people are working and doing their job and providing that customer service to their customers uh, because it can give them real, real data to al allow them to do that. Um, let's look at that data. So really what we need to be able to do is provide them with all of the information that's giving them exactly what's happening across their business. So they don't have to rely on seeing that sea of people across their business. And let's face it, gut feel is just not a trusted measurement of good customer service. So if we can gather the data, if we can review the data and understand what that means in terms of the customer service and the experience that I'm delivering, they will be able to make the uh, appropriate changes to their process processes and consistently exceed their customers' expectations. Another side of this also is being able to understand the way that their staff are performing. To be able to reward those that are overachieving, identify those that uh, maybe aren't quite there and help them and give them the support to get them to that point where they're equally overachieving as well. So really, really positive, both from the business owner themselves, but also the experience that they're giving their customers uh, as well. So this brings me to introduce you to uh, the latest addition to our portfolio. Uh, we've had iCall Suite uh, working alongside our cloud platform for some time, but there's been a few areas where it's falling a little bit short. It hasn't really been developing and giving some of the features and functionality that you need to be able to win and provide the right solution for your customers. Um, it hasn't really kept pace with the evolution of the cloud platform. So what we are delighted to introduce to you today is IPEX Analytics, the all new reporting and monitoring tool from Ericsson LG. There's so many positives about this product for us. First of all, it's an Ericsson LG product itself. It's got a defined roadmap and a set of people that are working alongside the people that are developing the cloud platform so that the product will continue to grow and evolve as the cloud platform underlying does as well. It's browser based. The customers will be able to access their data from wherever they need to, whether that's on a, uh, a tablet, as you can see in the picture, or a web browser from any device that they need to be able to, 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 to see that data from. The pricing's brilliant. It's in the price list already. If you haven't already seen it, it's there for you to, to, to see right now. Um, and it's, it's priced to sell in our competitive market. Uh, also priced so that you continue to retain really great gross margin. And it's a brilliant, fantastic value added opportunity for you to grow and uh, add value to the sales that you're, you're doing with, with your customers. So it's gonna help you grow your recurring revenue and that all important aver average revenue per user. So just have a quick look at a bit more detail here. So there are two different levels within IPEX Analytics. There's standard and there's advanced. In the standard version, you have the ability to monitor things like extensions and DDIs. So you can drill into exactly what your users are doing or what's happening based on the DDI transactions into your business. The other option is advanced, which has all of the standard features, but it also adds the ability to monitor hunt groups and ACD, and importantly, gives us the ability to monitor live ACD transactions, how many people are queuing, how many agents are logged in, and interact with the ACD functionality that's built into the cloud platform itself. 
One thing to note here is that the two uh, applications can't be mixed. So when you set up or sell to a customer, you need to decide if it's the standard option or the advanced option that you're offering them and price it appropriately. So the pricing is based on how many supervisors that the customer has, so one minimum, but you can add additional on a per month uh, cost, and then also how many endpoints that customer has got, how many extensions. So from a pricing perspective, you need to take that into consideration. But from a provisioning perspective, it's much, much easier to do because we just order the supervisor license and then the system automatically provisions all of the extensions that need to be monitored underneath that. So again, much, much simpler to the experience that we've had more recently with iCall Suite. And I'm also going to touch on here the fact that it is also going to be available with trial licenses. So Ed gave us the overview of the trial licenses and how they work with IPEX1 a little earlier. It's exactly the same with IPEX Analytics. You'll be able to set your customer up for a 60 day trial. And when the 60 days ex uh, expire, the charging will start. So a fantastic opportunity to install it with every customer that goes live, get them to interact with the data. And once they start relying on it, it will be much, much more difficult for them to remove that and say that they don't want to pay for it. So a great, great opportunity to start to attach more applications to the customers that you're selling the cloud solution to. So that brings me to come and show you a live demonstration. I didn't want to just put slides, uh, screenshots up of what it looks like. I felt it was really important for you to see that this is actually live. We have this product right now connected to the, the cloud platform. There's a, a small controlled introduction taking place so that we're being able to test that out with a number of partners. Um, and it is also attached to our live platform. So I'm just going to pop over here and show you what this um, looks like. So this is um, IPEX Analytics running live. Um, I'm going to just give you a little bit of a tour because some of the um, features on the page are, are um, the same as we go through. So first of all, what we can see at the top here is a little box that says filter. So if I click on the little uh, plus button, it'll open up here, giving me the ability to choose what it is that I want to filter by. So for example, I'm going to pop and have a little look at what happened yesterday. And I'm also going to change and look at all calls rather than just trunk or extension. But you can see there's a few other options here that we can um, look at. Just apply that and it will update. There we go. So here's all the data. So now what that's done is it's replaced all of the current today's data with yesterday's. Um, not liking the total calls, that's a bit scary. Um, and what you'll see down here is we've got a ribbon across the top, which is giving us the totals. Another little icon that you'll see is this download image. So at any point, if there's anything here that you want to be able to keep, maybe you want to take an export to pop into a report that you're providing somebody, you can hit the download button and it will allow you to do that. You also have the option to annotate it. So that when you're downloading those pictures, you can annotate them so that you can make a note of what that actually meant at that time. The other thing is when you hover over any of the areas, it also starts to give you the, the totals. And at the bottom, what you can see right now is a few boxes that currently don't have any data in them. So what we can do is click on the area at the top, the KPI that we want to report on. So let's just look at outgoing calls. And that's now giving us the information available here. So the total number of calls, we've got a breakdown of the top five extensions, and we've also got a breakdown of the top five DDIs. So this is looking at the outgoing data. If we look at incoming data, we can see that here. Again, it's now switched, and we can now see all of the information based on, on the inf uh, in internal information as well. So um, hopefully that's uh, what you'll see here is it's massively easy to use, which is, which is brilliant. So what I'm just going to show you now is dive into the reporting. I'm not going to go through all of this. As you can see, it's expanded a menu option here, which is showing all of the different types of report that we are available, that we have available to us. And remember that each of those reports can be filtered by the day, date, and time, the user, the DDI, any of the different areas that we want, might want to, to look at. Let's just dive into a couple of them just so you get a feel for what that looks like. So here we're going to look at the extension summary. So it's just going to refresh the data for us and give us an extension summary. This is today, so this is current, what's happening here right now. And again, what we can see down here is a little breakdown of the users, as well as having all of the different charts and information. So lots and lots and lots of information there for us to, to view. Another little area that I'm just going to touch on that I mentioned earlier is the all important unreturned missed calls. So this is going to give us a list of unreturned missed calls. It'd be nice to think we haven't got any today, but let's just uh, wait and see what happens. 
And the other thing I should also mention while it's refreshing is that any of this information can also be scheduled. So any of the reports and data that are going to be important to each of the different users and departments, that information can be scheduled so that any of that information can be called back. So what you can see here is a few calls through to uh, um, Alex, uh, Mark, me and Ed. So we've all got missed calls. So we can now identify who those calls were from, get back to those people and make sure that we're exceeding um, everyone's uh, customer expectation. And then the final bit I'm just going to show you on this little section is about the agents, because I talked about the fact that you're going to have the ability to um, offer this in, in conjunction with ACD. So you'd expect there to be some agent information here. So uh, let's pop and look at the call summary. And that will give us a um, quick view of the agent summary, albeit that actually live on our platform, we don't have a lot of ACD functionality running, but it will just give you an idea that it's actually there. So here we've got a load of hunt group data that is available to us that we can see um, in there. So this is the sales hunt group actually, which isn't an ACD group, but you can see that the information is just as important for a normal group as it would be for ACD. Now, my final little area that I want to show you here is the dashboard functionality. So as with the reports, it's expanded and given me a lot of options. And if I were just to filter on this one here, first of all, the company wall board, that will give us a really, really nice overview of um, all of the information as a snapshot of what's been happening within Pragma today. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to go through every, every dashboard, but there is one other dashboard I'm going to show you after we've uh, looked at this one. So just taking a little while to update. This is okay. So there we go. So here's the company wall board. So lots of nice big letters, uh, sorry, numbers to tell us exactly what's going on at the moment with some summary information down here that I can hover over and get a feel for exactly what's going on. So this isn't a feel that's not my gut feel. This is actually telling me exactly what's happening within Pragma right now. And then my final little area here is the uh, Pragma sales dashboard. So I've got the ability to create my own dashboards. So instead of worrying about or utilizing one of the predefined wall boards, I can completely create my own dashboard. And that also gives me the ability to brand it. It also gives me the ability to use company colors and be able to make sure that I'm reporting and monitoring all of the really, really important information that we um, want to see. So I'm just going to pop a look a few things across here and make that full screen. And uh, that will then update and give us all of the information that is available to us. So um, right here, we can see now all of the information that's current. So we've got uh, a breakdown of uh, an overview of the sales department, the orders and provisioning team. We can see what's happening on the main number. And also we can see um, what's happening as a, as a group summary. And then over here on the right hand side, we've got some defined um, options that we're looking at for individual salespeople. So, uh, uh, as you can see, the sales team here. Um, and it just really looks appealing, um, really, really easy to set up. And um, hopefully you can see the importance of, of what customers would, would um, um, gain from having this, uh, this product connected to them. So that's the end of the, the demonstration that I just wanted to talk you through. Hopefully that gives you an idea of exactly what we're going to be delivering to you. In terms of um, release, uh, we're expecting this to be available um, around January time. Uh, we're obviously in the, the trial phase at the moment where we may identify little tweaks and changes that need to be made, but we'll keep you updated. And obviously if you have got any customers or information or, or, or uh, requirements that you have right now, please feel free to speak to your uh, uh, Pragma account manager. We'd be delighted to engage with you and help you understand that. So just to finish off here, I just wanted to uh, say that, you know, I, I think that the challenge really is to make IPEX analytics the beating heart of the customer experience. And hopefully by un asking those right questions, uh, you'll be able to reveal the, the areas that the customers can't measure and be able to demonstrate to them by delivering IPEX analytics how they'll be able to uh, make sure that their processes, their procedures are, are meeting the customer's expectations of their customer service. And for you, it will build great value into your sale and help you stand out from the competition by delivering a solution, not just a telephone system.